Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, subscribe, share, support. You can subscribe wherever you hear this, be it on YouTube, Anchor, Transistor, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever it may be. You can share the link that you found this to with others. You can also make sure to share the very words of God that you hear recited and read aloud. And you can support at aksum.substack.com or at patreon.com slash tawahado. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash t-e-w-a-h-i-d-o. Aksum is a-k-s-u-m dot substack.com. Today we are in chapter eight of the scroll of the apocalypse or the scroll of revelation or the scroll of uncovering we'll begin with verses one to five and we are today reading from the new revised standard version catholic edition when the lamb opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about half an hour and i saw the seven angels who stand before god and seven trumpets were given to them Another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar that is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and an earthquake throughout the bible we see that the people of god are afraid of the elements which they cannot control and which ultimately are only under the control of the palm of god which has both destruction and salvation both healing and blessing and cursing so here we realize that you bring up isaiah and if you look at the scroll of Isaiah, which in the Ethiopic or Ge'ez tradition is called Darak Hadis, which means the dry New Testament, that is to say it is the New Testament before the New Testament, we find incense to be bad. And yet if we look at the scroll of Revelation, we see that incense is good. This is a reminder that incense is neither good nor evil. Do not eat of the fruit that Adam and Eve were prohibited from eating eating do not seek a system of ethics or morality that will tell you everything that is good and everything that is bad so you can categorize everything into heroes and villains the picture is much grayer much more contextual much more case by case and much more particular the type of incense is important here the incense is qualified by the base word for agio which is holy and that is the holy ones the saints it is the prayers of the saints that rose before god at the hand of the angel and so re remember the importance of praying for one another for the living praying for the dead the dead praying for the living and the living praying for the living all sorts of combinations to be had there but remember that the incense that you put before god could be found displeasing or could be found pleasing on hope you you hope that it will be found pleasing but the best you can do is to try to adjust your thoughts words and deeds to the commandments of scripture and the golden censer that is here is is also known in the again ethiopic is tradition as a an homage a type or a typology an allegory for our Lady, the Virgin Mary, because inside of this golden censer, which is the container, uh, sometimes in the English tradition, they call it a thurible. So a thurible or a censer, C-E-N-S-E-R, not your five senses, S-E-N-S-E. -E. The golden censer or the golden thurible is known as a type for Our Lady Mary because inside of it, you have the burning coals of the divine fire, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see a lot of fiery imagery in this chapter, and we'll see more kind of judgment talk as we continue through. Verses 6 to 7. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets made ready to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, 
and they were hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. This again reminds you of the scroll of Isaiah. It also reminds you of the psalmist. It also reminds you of the gospel according to Matthew. It also reminds you of the scroll of Ecclesiastes. Beware of vain glory. Be uh, wary of things that are here one day, gone the next. Be wary of the temporary, of, of the fleeting, of the, the of the things that are vanishing. And focus on the eternal. Think about that which is forever and ever unto eons and eons, ages and ages. Think about the instruction of the Lord rather than temporary passions. Verses 8 to 9. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea became blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. This blood reminds me of the plagues of Egypt, in which the Egyptian authority par excellence, the Pharaoh, was preventing Israel from worshipping in the wilderness. He was trying to impose a slavery on the Israelites that was in competition with the slavery offered by God. There's no avoiding slavery. There's only choosing and selecting who your master is going to be. Choose the God of Scripture to be your master. Verses 10 to the end. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many died from the water because it was made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light was darkened, a third of the day was kept from shining, and likewise the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew in mid-heaven, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth! at the blasts of the other trumpets that the three angels are about to blow. I just have to keep mentioning Isaiah. Again, this falling star reminds us of the story of the devil, who's that fallen angel or that falling star. Of course, Jesus is the, the great and bright morning star for us. But in general, especially the final three woes of this eagle who has that great predatorial bird's eye view is a wake-up call for all people of the teaching of John the Baptist, of the teaching of the Lord Jesus, of the teaching of the Apostle Peter, and the teaching of the Apostle Paul, which is to repent prior to the forthcoming and yet unknown specifically dread day, day of woe, 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 day of judgment by the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God for his judgment and for all things.